Jogger Muska. Buenas tardes. Lo siento, no puedo hacer esa charla en español. Um, I've been asked to talk about the future of journalism. My qualifications. Sure, this is an idiom that's familiar in Spanish. If it isn't, I'm sorry, but I love the picture. And we're going to be with elephants for a while, so bear with me. The elephant in the room, of course, is a large subject that you can't really ignore. Um, one elephant in the room is that my understanding of this whole topic is pretty focused on American things, and I apologize if I'm making any statements that are really inappropriate to your world. Um, hopefully, if you can teach me about what I don't know in that case later tonight or tomorrow, I would love to hear and have a conversation with you about that. But uh, I also love uh, idioms, so if you can tell me how you say the equivalent of the elephant in the room in any languages you know, bring it on, I love that. So anyway, the elephant in the room in journalism is the economics. The economics of journalism are a disaster. It's not news to anyone, but it's something we really have to contend with. There's been layoffs, print reductions, closings of newspapers, historic newspapers selling for fire sale prices. It's a disaster. Last year, Columbia University's Tau Center for Journalism published an incredible report on post-industrial journalism. If you haven't read it, I very much recommend it. Um, in it, they basically lay out the fact that journalism has always been subsidized, that the cost of newspapers and magazines didn't pay for the production process. And in the last 100 years or so, that subsidy was paid by advertisers, and the internet wrecks the advertising subsidy. The internet has brought advertisers many more choices about how they can spend their money, and it's brought the audience many more choices of where to focus their attention. And it's left traditional news organizations struggling to adapt to this brave new world. Speaking of elephants, I'm also reminded of the parable of the five blind men and the elephant. Maybe you know that each of the blind men touches a part of the elephant and just concludes that it's a different animal. So that's probably me right now, because I don't really claim to be an expert. Mariano is pranking me by putting me on the stage to talk about the future of journalism. But I'm going to go for it and come along for the ride. So I think that the future of journalism is love. Thanks to Brian for helping me coin that or find that hub. But uh, the future of journalism is love. In English, they say love will find a way. When people are impassioned, they don't need a subsidy. They're happy to give their money for an amazing product or an experience, or sometimes just out of pride for supporting something that they feel very passionate about. Beyond money, passion leads people to give time and energy and, and make things happen. So I won't go so far as to say love is all you need, but I don't really see how journalism could thrive without a strong grounding in love. This isn't all that different from the past, of course. Journalism has never been a big dollar operation in the whole. But by focusing on it, I think that we can see that there are a few things that we can feel good about for the future. So I really think that the future of journalism will be designed, and it will be designed with love. I've actually been very pleased to hear a lot of talk about design at this conference. I think that people are already onto this, but this is kind of how I'm thinking about things. For a long time, design meant how things look. But along with all the technology developments that have uh, characterized the last 20, 30, 100 years, however you want to call it, um, there's been a really great flowering of a richer understanding of design. It's not just how it looks. It's a, a more than a material product. Steve Jobs famously said, design is how it works. So at the center of these newly developed design thinking approaches is the user. Design thinking is centered on empathy for the user. We have to understand who's going to use this thing that we're making, what problems our product solves for them, how it makes their lives better. Especially as life becomes more virtual and mediated, it's better to think about designing processes which may have some products. I think that this news right now is very uh, entangled in the material products that have been the form, and we need to get past that. So you might think this is, this is journalism. It's very important. People need it, whether it's easy or not. We can't just bow to their needs and make everything delightful. But you can't just insist on it. The fact is, people have a lot of choices. And, Television especially has shown us that people will watch a lot of things that aren't news if it's easier or if it fits their needs, whatever those needs are. And you may not love those needs, but you can't just disregard them. Uh, people need to eat a healthy diet, too. More vegetables, less sugar. People need to exercise. You can tell them that as well. You can try and shame them or guilt them, but I don't think that the energy that it takes to, to try and do that really pays off as well as, as empathy, understanding, and really 
uh, coming to terms with the fact that we're all humans, in fact. Uh, I can't remember the words. I saw a wonderful banner on uh, one of the streets this afternoon as I was walking. Uh, basically says, I might not be perfect, but I'm human. Uh, and it was, it was nice to see that stretched across the street, just that that would be a message someone would want to put up. So that was, that was good. Um, but anyway, so we can't just say, you know, take it. It's journalism. Eat your vegetables. We need to understand how what we want to do meets with what they want to do and meet in the middle. You can try to understand why people don't do what maybe they should and design accordingly. Maybe even deliver some tough love. Uh, maybe at first they'll resist what you're suggesting. But at the end of the day, you really need to take into account what people need and what problems they solve. But if you do, you can create the sense of delight, of joy, of passion that really fires people up, makes our own work much more satisfying, and hopefully gets over the problem of persuading them or conning them out of their money and makes it something where people are saying, hey, thank you, I'd love to be in this system with you in this business relationship. I'll give you my money, you give me something that's really valuable, that's great. So I think that a very important thing for the future of news is for all of us who are engaged to think about designing the future of news. So a uh, brief break from the elephants for a minute. Uh, a Pew study last year found out that half of Americans get their news digitally, more than from radio and newspapers, and approaching the number who get their news from television. Brian said in the statistic that it said that it might have surpassed television. Uh, I hadn't seen that when I was prepping. If you look just at younger people, though, more of them get their news from digital sources than from TV. But even those most common digital delivery systems don't show many signs of being designed to make users passionate. So last year, designer Craig Maud wrote this excellent article, another must-read, about journalism product design. He called it subcompact publishing. He drew an analogy between Honda's development of subcompact cars, which is something they could do because they weren't a legacy car manufacturer. Uh, and he notes that current digital magazines are often clumsy adaptations of their physical physical predecessors, again, sort of entangled in the form that has been instead of the needs that we're trying to address. Kind of like a car designed by Homer Simpson, actually. I had the picture of the Homer vehicle on a slide before I should have uh, adapted my text and took the picture out. If you've ever seen it, it's very funny. Homer just put everything he ever wanted on a car until it was a big, ridiculous joke. Anyway, um, so the, the whole essay is very well worth reading, but even if you just kind of, it's in pyramid form. You start at the top, read as much as you can, you're going to learn a lot from it. But he produces a whole subcompact manifesto laying out specific design considerations that would make digital magazines be more appropriate to the, the current situation, to what people want to do, and, uh, and it, it's, well, it's a good lesson to take. Some points of his manifesto might guide you away from apps. He talks about using the open web and preferring HTML which is something I very much uh, have empathy for myself, I think is worth considering. But I did want to kind of share an anecdote about the idea of design, news design products that can make this real thing that I'm talking about happening. So when I first discovered the New York Times iPad app, um, it turned me into a paying subscriber almost immediately. I hadn't paid for the Times. I don't live in New York, and I hadn't uh, bothered to give them my money. But when I used the app, it really addressed what I wanted. Some simple things just that I could mention are that... Um, you could read through and kind of feel like you had flipped all the pages of the paper. You could see what was available to you and read a little bit of every story in a way that feels much more satisfying to me than trying to browse the web page, which sometimes is discomfortingly uh, infinite and leaves me wondering when I should stop or how I'll know if I've kind of considered what I want to be aware of before I move on with my day. Um, it also, of course, being in a tablet is much more agreeable to read than a laptop, which either has me hunched up over a desk or you know, burning my thighs with the laptop on my lap. So, um, and I think there's one other. Oh, and also the offline reading was a thing that I very much liked about it. So that was a case where all of a sudden I was like, hey, this is excellent. This is just what I want. They got my money. And that's really what we're talking about here. Um, another good thing about the app model for publication, and, and Maude isn't totally dismissing it, he's just saying be 